Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, September 7, 2023, 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We're having a reverse aging health call tomorrow night around 9 p.m. We're going to discuss this uh, alleged new crap attempt of a new virus or influenza, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to look at the agenda of the lower dark matter frequencies on the planet, what their agenda is now that their uh, heads, their leaders have been mitigated. Now we just are dealing with the minions. There's, there's a few key areas uh, for us to acknowledge deeply. And as Amachi stated, love is our true essence. Love has no limitations of caste, religion, race, or nationality. We are all beads strung together on the same thread of love to awaken this unity and to spread to others the love that is our inherent nature is the true goal of human life. Now, even though you may not think this about yourself, but you are lovable, you are unique. Your unique way of being in this world, your energy, your presence, and just the normal, natural way you are, is lovable. You do not have to do anything special to be lovable. You were born lovable. It's a quality that you cannot escape from. It's your energy and your consciousness. Being worthy of love is just who you are, who we all are. When we accept the fact that we are lovable just the way we are, without having to change a thing, nothing, nada, it makes it easier for others to love you. People can feel it when you love yourself. They can feel it. How can they not? And it feels like a warm, welcoming invitation from the heart. So I invite you to imagine that everyone loves you exactly the way you are right now. Take the leap in consciousness and try it out. You'll start feeling that it is true and begin manifesting more loving experiences all through your day. See, when we, when we become convinced through the ego mind that we're not lovable, that um, we don't love ourselves, that we're unhappy, disenchanted, that's all ego mind, and it's all empty thoughts until we fill them with energy. This universe wants us to experience more and more and more love every day. Believe it or not, this is one of the great purposes of life. To let in as much love as you possibly can. There is not a shortage of love in this universe. There's no shortage at all. The greatest love is already here and all around us now. It's a choice. We can choose to open our hearts, just, just a smidgen, and allow warm, cozy energy to come in. You can find it easy to allow yourself to receive love because you're a good person. You have a good heart. And you have good intentions. Believe these things. 
Because deep, deep, deep down, you know they are true. You might be embarrassed for some certain reasons on how you've been programmed. Some people say, well, if I say I love myself, then everybody's going to think that I'm arrogant, conceited. Yeah, society. That's why I constantly emphasize, don't, just don't give it the time of day on what others think about you. It really, it doesn't, it has nothing to do about you, really. The highest phenomenon is when love is a state and not a relationship. Not that you're in love, but that you are love. Huge, Osho, that's huge. Not that you're in love, but that you are love. The vibration of love is a powerful thing to focus on. It is the ever-expanding force of energy that is continuously saying yes to life. It loves dwelling on the positive aspects of life and having compassion for the negative. The vibration has a soft energy about it. And somehow in the right situations, it has the most fierce, courageous strength as well. You'll know you are in it when everything feels right, light, and good. And these feelings are deeply grounded <coughs> Excuse me, in your body. The vibration of love is that which allows you to deeply relax and naturally exist in a sweet, vulnerable place that is empowered open to receive and free. It is not controlling, not anything to do with controlling, nor resisting this life in any way. It is appreciating, accepting, and approving of what is. Real love is eager to embrace others and listen to what is really going on beneath the surface. It only knows gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, welcoming with an open, accepting heart, sadness, and all of the tears. Love is not afraid of anything. It's like the sun. It was just meant to shine bright, give it to warm light, and life to the world. When you say yes to the vibration of love, you're saying yes to the relaxing, healing energy of acceptance. In other words, you're accepting yourself. You're loving yourself and you're accepting yourself. So it's a state. You are choosing to accept yourself exactly as you are, where you are in your life, and allowing any negative critical ideas that you have about yourself are okay too. Love welcomes all, loves all, sees the good in all. It takes in those hard, desperate thoughts of unworthiness, fault, lack, limitation, and treats them like little, sweet, orphan animals who just need a warm home and a big, cozy hug. When your negative thoughts know they are okay, that they are lovable too, they will relax, soften, and let go. It's, 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 you know, prove it over and over again. Bees are attracted to honey. Okay? So when, no matter, no matter, what your situation is and you're furious about something, you want to you just want to lash out at whoever the person is or situation or company. But then you you take a step back and say, wait a minute here. I'm not interested in doing that. You can be firm, okay, but respectful to others or whoever you're talking with. And you're just respectful, but firm. They'll they'll know. They'll know. And you'll find that, like the analogy of honey with bees, your, the analogy is, is that 
when you're soft, attentive, understanding, things go a lot better. They really do. It dis it disarms the other party. It really does. It disarms the other party. And it keeps you off of jumping into that pool of goop. There is something so deeply beautiful when we say yes with our hearts to the vibration of love. Something magical happens inside the center of our being. It's as if the soul of our life catches on fire and starts blazing its way through life with unstoppable pizzazz and joy. We feel totally alive, turned on by life, and excited about interacting with everyone. We just want to share this incredible experience with everyone. We feel totally alive, turned on by life, and excited about interacting with everyone. We just want to share this incredible experience with everybody because it's just too huge to contain. Practice focusing on the vibration of love. How often do you do that? Practice feeling that yes in your body to energy of love. Practice feeling that yes in your body to energy of love. Say yes in each moment you can to letting in more and more love. You can do it. It's super fun. Just look inside yourself. Be honest. And find out what love feels like for you. Trust your body. Know that it cannot lie. I dare you to open your heart right now to letting in more love than may feel normal or comfortable. Expand your old perceptions of yourself. Step into a new you. Welcome in this new being who is ready in every moment to welcome in life. Letting in more and more joy. Give life the biggest yes that you've got inside. You're worth it. We all are. Remember, we deserve the best of everything. When we can get centered in real devotion to this vibration, we will discover the most amazing, ridiculously beautiful, awesome life you could ever dream of. And people will say, you know, with, with the new avenue of higher frequencies and new earth and, you know, people recognizing and understanding, you know, does that mean that we're not going to experience any challenging times? Well, it's like Wayne Dyer used to say, everybody wants happiness, nobody wants pain. But remember, you can't have a rainbow without a little rain And if and when you end up knowing who and what you are, piece of cake. Piece of cake. Many of us have issues with forgiving. Uh, we in some situations it's like look at the look at these corrupted souls on the planet and all the harm and damage and just all the crap that they've done. Do we forgive them? And I don't mean <laughs> I don't mean forgiving and having them stay on the planet. I'm talking about forgiving them for what they've done and then send them on their way.
Because when we carry a grudge against anybody or anything, whether it's big or small, we're clinging to a heavy shield around our heart that's weighing us down and negatively impacting us on many levels. By continuing to be angry or upset with somebody else, something else, because it has wronged you, only hurts you in the long run. Like attracts like. And when we hold on to feelings, how someone has hurt us, we're anchoring our energy in the past and attracting another victim-like scenario in the future. And your eager mind is saying, no, you're crazy. you got to go beat them up or you got to do this or do that. And if we don't learn as a people how to forgive and let go of the pain that's been done, it doesn't allow us to be fully open, available, alive, and present to this divine moment. Our being becomes tight, protected, contracted when we cannot forgive people. The quicker we can learn to let go, the less time we spend in pain and suffering. Holding on to a grudge from the past with anyone only hinders our ability to become a positive, open, loving being who is manifest of our dreams. The word forgiveness is derived from the word to give. Forgiveness is a gift of freedom and healing. When we give it to another person, we actually are giving this to ourselves. The act of forgiving another may not free the other person if they do not accept it. Yet it will definitely liberate your energy. Even if the other person holds on to the past grudge all the way to their grave. We can still forgive them for not knowing how. Our job is simply to let the past go and trust that everything is always in perfect divine order. And this universe never, ever makes a mistake, ever. Every act of harm unleashed is pure stimulation for our soul's awakening. The pain makes us wake up, recalibrate our life, adjust our sails forward towards a bigger freedom. The judgments we tend to inflict upon ourselves force us to love ourselves even deeper. The wound inside us creates a womb where a new life can be formed. The wound, it's, the wound inside us creates a womb where new life can be formed. We must then choose to give birth to something inside us that is more loving, healing, and creative. We must choose also to forgive ourselves for anything that is less than love. When we do forgive ourselves, we instantly feel a great lightness that opens our chest and spreads all throughout our body. It is a powerful path to healing that is always available to choose in every moment of our lives. Every day, we have the option to let go of our pride and let in the love. Or, hold on tighter and be right about something unfair or wrong. If you want to be a sensitive, humble, and deeply loving being, you must choose to learn the response of forgiveness and compassion. Softening our ego is perhaps the most empowering and enlightening action 
we can do as it puts us directly in control with our soul. If and when you are ready to experience this amazing power of forgiveness today, simply follow what I'm about to share with you. Recognize your attachment to your story. Recognize your attachment to your story. When you hold on to a grudge, you are actually holding on to the story about what happened along with heavy feelings attached to your story. When you fully feel those heavy feelings that arise when you think about your story, you then can move through them and underneath them. Be curious about what is there underneath your feeling, as it will be something you never thought of before. Notice how you played your part and the drama and take responsibility for the role you stepped into. When you understand what the payoff of, of benefit you received by playing this role, no matter how horrible it was, you can then let go of the pattern completely. A lot of people carry repressed feelings. And, you know, some of them lifetime after lifetime. When someone mistreats or hurts, hurts us, we may either express this pain or repress it. If you were taught to repress your feelings, put on a brave face, go on with our life, you'll have many heavy feelings inside you, rotting away at your core. All repressed feelings fester deep inside of us and cause us to continue to carry a burden about life, relationships, people, and the world. The first step in forgiving is letting go of these heavy feelings allowing them to turn into lighter feelings. There are many techniques that can help us release pent-up emotions from the past. One simple way you can do this on your own is emotional release. There's a lot of people journaling. Just write about the past event without censoring it. Write from your most emotional place. Keep writing until you have emptied everything out. Do not read it once you have finished. Wait a few days or weeks before you read it. You can burn what you have journaled and proclaim out loud, I let this go. Now, if and when your repressed emotions are very strong or feel overwhelming, it may be best to get the support of a trained professional to help you let them go. Continuously choose forgiveness. In every moment, you have the opportunity to choose forgiveness. Once you release that holding on to the past only harms you, you can consciously choose to let it go instead of returning to resentment. Choosing forgiveness is a constant process. It's not once in a while. This means you will always choose to feel feelings of lightness, freedom, and healing from the past event. Once you have decided to forgive someone, you visualize the person is in front of you and say it out loud to them. I forgive you completely for what happened. I love you and thank you for the lesson. 
please forgive me for what I have done. Notice how it feels just reading this proclamation in your body. Right? I love you. you for the I forgive you completely for what has happened. Please forgive me for what I've done. Notice how it feels just reading this proclamation in your body. By stating this message out loud, you create an instant energetic shift in your body. A person can be on the phone, in the room, or simply there in your mind. If you do this, in your mind, the secret is that it must feel real to you. You will be amazed at how this declaration starts opening up your entire world in ways you never dreamed were possible. You'll soon see how it sparks the manifestation of more positive and desired experiences in your life. You ever notice that you, when you believe, right, that you, you look at your life and you look at and for some reason we've had this uh, in, in, in kind of ingrained in us, is that we, we always think the grass is always greener on the other side. And we spend a lot of time trying to get to that other side. And the majority of the time we don't. Now, the mind doesn't have the capacity to rest forever in the state of happiness. Because if it did, we would not evolve. Think about it. What if the mind was totally satisfied? This question, right? What if the mind was totally satisfied? What would happen to your world? Who would you even look deeper into this question at all? Would you? Would you care about anything of any real meaning in life? If so, why would you? Throughout our entire lives, this seeking mechanism is one machine we cannot turn off, nor would we want to. We simply have to be deeply aware that this perpetual seeking machine is always running. The divine design of the mind is perfect. And we need to understand its perfection if we are to really enjoy life and find our spiritual journey we need to understand first that desire is not the cause of suffering rather it's our attachment to desire which holds us to the state of anxiety to be continuously wanting wishing and thinking is utter hell to be able to rest relax and enjoy the radiant healing golden energy from this great spiritual light from within is absolute bliss. Our mind has been embedded for centuries with this ancient unsatisfied program for one very wonderful reason. A great creativity and manifesting fire gets ignited when we believe the grass is greener, richer, softer, and more lush in the neighbor's yard. Sure, the mind can get crazy and start thinking the neighbors must be smarter, happier, and more enlightened because they have greener grass. Chances are high that the neighbors don't actually have greener grass than you, but you can't tell that truth to the seeking, desiring mind. The good news is, is that an enormous fire of desire is lit when we see what we just don't have at all. The mind is a genius at believing whatever it wants to believe is true. 
it can only see a fraction of the whole truth. It cannot contain the entire universal truth at the time, all the time. It would be out of job if it had that knowledge. It's a master at inventing super creative stories. The mind is a master of inventing super creative stories about our limitations in this world, which fill us up with this amazing experience called insecurity. These wonderful insecure feelings are perfectly designed to push us into our spiritual path. They provoke us to dig deeper. These wonderful insecure feelings are perfectly designed to push you onto your spiritual path. They provoke you to dig deeper. So you stop functioning in automatic robot mode and you find your real purpose for being alive. Your insecurity causes you to drop the mind games so that you start stoking your real spiritual fire, unleashing your deepest motivation, your highest inspiration, and your richest creativity inside. Unless you become a Buddha, which means enlightened one, you have not lived at all because you do not know the great poetry of this life, of any life, the great music of existence. You will not know the celestial celebration that goes on and on. You will not know the dance of the stars. This bliss is for you, for all of us. All these flowers, all these songs and all these stars are for you. You are entitled to miracles. Oh. See, we weren't born to be stale and stationary. We were born to evolve, expand our consciousness, and eventually become awakened Buddhas. A Buddha simply means one who has stopped sleeping or one who is aware self-realized, living fully in the now, enlightened one. It's perhaps the easiest and most natural way we can experience this life. Yet, it means we have to unlearn everything the enlightened path in our lives, right? Everything we believe to be the reason why we are here. We have to unlearn it all. You either choose to or you don't. I'd highly recommend you choose to. To stimulate the enlightened path in our lives, we need to create more space and room to grow. We need to feel the lack of something and experience the great emptiness that is all around us. This empty feeling is always available, inherent within each desire that comes from the mind. To reach the enlightened state, we must dive into the mind and let it go. We must choose to let the mind believe that the neighbor's grass is greener than our own and realize how ridiculous it is to be comparing grass in the first place. We must notice, choose to notice, all the places in our life where we are comparing ourselves with others with people we look up to, saying that they have something we don't. We must allow the mind to be brimming with jealousy, full with desire, so much that it implodes onto this fantastic empty universe that is exploding with life. If and when we allow the mind to do what it does, it will eventually invent some fantastic 
new, organic, healthier way to grow better grass and one day have greener grass than the neighbors with a glorious and newly imagined goal and destination to be entertained by? The mind can provoke us to expand our consciousness. Playing its endless games within games inside of itself, just for the pure discovery of, of all the many multidimensional joys and pleasures of being alive, what else did you want to do with your time here on this planet? Nurture your mind with great thoughts, for you will never go any higher than you think. Benjamin Disraeli. Very true. One word of caution is that on your manifesting journey, be very aware that the mind is a Jedi master at distracting us from what's spiritually real and essential. This distraction is also sacred, needed, and divine. For when we finally give up seeking and attend to what actually is spiritual and real, we see how the distraction was not really a distraction, but a truly essential ingredient in directing our path towards a spiritual awakening. It's quite beautiful to sit back and recognize how perfect every aspect of existence actually is. Nothing is actually imperfect or actually as we think it is. Our addictions are glorious. Our perpetual search for something better is deeply needed for enlightenment. What we think will make us happy is the essential illusion needed to find the real. This feeling that we are lacking something is the succulent dangling chocolate dangling on the golden string to get us to come out of our dark caves. Perfection is everywhere and in everything, always. The divine being you truly are is ridiculously intelligent. It is so spiritually smart, it knows where we are hiding and exactly how to get us to come out. It realizes that we would never know what true wholeness was like unless we believed we had a hole to fill. We cannot know what blissful freedom feels like until we experience the most imprisoning, limiting state of mind. The great mystery of this life has this miraculous way of continuously teaching us what we most need to know for our enlightenment. There is not a moment that goes by where the universe is not inviting us to dive deeper inside and surrender more completely into the healing depths of our soul. We are constantly being summoned to come out of hiding. This universe wants us to appreciate this wonderfully spiritual gift of existence. It is always giving the God source to us to liberate ourselves from the internal catacomb-like prisons of the mind. We are being constantly welcomed to see everything in our lives with absolute love and clarity. We always have this option to sit down, relax about it all, and understand our life's mission. Right now, we can stop everything, choose to live in total devotion, in connection with our heart's spiritual presence. We were all born to discover that we are amazing, multidimensional, divine, manifesting beings who can create anything we desire. This huge and fully awesome task requires that we unleash our full power, reveal our ultimate treasure inside. The greatest treasure we have is found once we stop the mind. The greatest treasure we have is, to fi is found once we stop the mind and rest at our source of consciousness. This is meditation, and it is the divine doorway to opening our life up to the highest states of energy, love, and consciousness. 
for a stopping of the mind happens every day. Yet it's just whether we are doing it consciously or if it's being done to us and have no way to create it. The greatest guru is always within you. Within all of us. Use your mind instead of being used by your mind. Most of us are used by our Worship, respect, honor, and love this brilliant, all-powerful tool so you can create what you want in your life. Stop being unconsciously used by the fool, by the tool. If you don't use the tool continuously, you will be used by it. This means don't get over-identified with your tool. Don't avoid your tool. Do not fight with your tool. Deep down, realize your soul is ultimately in charge and running the show. Trust in this, always. Trust that life has a higher intelligence than you'll ever understand. And it is taking you on the most exquisite, unique ride through this world. So that one day, you sit back, become the Jedi Master of your mind, and experience the greatest form of satisfaction and pleasure. One last piece of advice for you on your manifesting journey, which I believe is one of the most helpful ideas to learn, is this. Become devoted to being gentle with yourself, no matter what. When you can be gentle with your mind, you will master it and eventually be free from it. The mind will listen to you instead of you always listening to it. When you can have full mastery over the mind, all you feel is a great love and gentleness with everything, thought, memory, and experience you come across on your inner world. This is real mastery. You cannot be gentle no matter what, no matter how crazy, irate, or demanding the world becomes. Make the promise to yourself right now that you will be gentle with you no matter what occurs. No matter what. Enjoy the journey. Guaranteed to get even better. 10,000 deeply eternal loving to you. I'll join you in the meditation and I'll return to close us out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Be still. Be one with everything. There is nothing greater than the feeling of oneness. The sacred experience is found through honoring, merging with every thought and feeling that arises. The divine unification of what manifests into total bliss and freedom. Merge nurture and heal your soul take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night following morning you will return here friday september 8 2023 3 15 p.m eastern and 9 p.m around 9 p.m eastern the reverse aging health call be gentle kind generous and humble with yourself at all times be in the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's done within or without.